This video has very kindly been sponsored by BOTB, who have just released a very exciting new supercar week. Now, I'm sure that you've heard me speak about BOTB, the dream car competition company before, but next week's winner is a very, very special one. Let me explain. All 150 cars from their usual range have been taken off for this week only and replaced with eight supercars. This means somebody, potentially one of you guys watching, is guaranteed to win a supercar. Tickets range from £2.30 to £3.35 and the various cars available to win can be seen on screen now. As usual, a contribution to the first year's insurance will be offered as well as the chance to win a further 20 grand cash too. Simply enter the correct coordinates in their spot the ball game to enter and you might just find yourself cruising around in a brand new supercar. Quickly though, before we do get into the main video, just a very quick personal thank you to BOTB for not only supporting me as a channel for the last couple of years, but also supporting me through this very uncertain time. It's brands like these guys who keep creators going, so any support towards them in return would be greatly appreciated. However, to be honest, you're the one watching who has the potential to win a six-figure supercar for literally a couple of quid. So to be honest, I think you've got the best deal here. <laughs> anyway, a big thank you once again. It goes to BOTV for sponsoring this video. And with that said, let's crack on. Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. Behind me is my BMW M140i and in today's video, we're gonna be running through some of my personal tips to anyone watching who's keen on buying one. Okay, so before we get involved in the main proportion of this video, I have a small little proposal for you guys watching and it's about the stripes. So, for those of you who don't know, I got these stripes fitted um, in December last year. So they've been on my car now for around four months and Ever since that day, I've been inundated with comments and messages saying, take them off, remove them. They ruin the car totally, even with the new wheels, which personally I think tie themselves together hand in hand. But the power is in your hands. If this video gets 1000 likes, then I will personally remove the stripes on my car. So there we go. You guys have been asking and wanting this to happen and now it is up to you. So yeah, if this video gets 1000 likes, then the stripes will be gone. So now that that is out of the way, we can get stuck in with the main part of the video. So yes, like the intro said, I'm gonna be running through five of my personal tips to anyone out there looking to buy an M140i. Don't get me wrong, these cars are absolutely phenomenal. There is not a hot hatch like it. A three litre, six cylinder rear wheel drive car um, for the price no more than 30 grand, well, 35 maybe at the moment. But anyway, you join me at the back of the car because it's all down to the fact that it is rear wheel drive actually. And for me personally, this was my first rear wheel drive car. Um, and they are very, very sketchy. Not only does the back end really like to swing out, especially when you've got traction control off, but when it regains the traction, it that's what makes it sketchy because it just twitches and it does twitch quite violently. Now, yes, because I have the diff fitted on my car, that is the solution um, to definitely make it drive a lot better, make it drive more like an M car, um, but also make it a lot more predictable um, so you can kind of save it in a stylish kind of manner, you know? Um, but that is one thing which I thought I'd mention first right off the bat is that these cars, you have to respect them. They are very, very twitchy, almost more twitchy when we're on a day like today, there is a lot of grip because as soon as, well, if you've got an open diff like what these cars come with standard, you've got that one wheel really going for it and then it gains traction and really twitches the back end. Um, so obviously having the LSD, which this car is fitted with the M Performance one, it makes both those rear wheels spin in time and just makes it a lot more predictable. So if anyone out there looking to buy one of these and is kind of scared about that, then the diff will improve it massively. So my second tip for you guys is actually to do with the interior. Now, for me personally, it's not the most advanced interior out there tech wise. Like for example, as standard, you can't get Apple CarPlay. You don't have a fully digital dash and just some of the buttons do seem a little bit aged. Personally, I myself have come from a Mark 7.5 Golf R. I think personally, this is the natural progression in the hot hatch market. That of course had Apple CarPlay as standard. It had a nice digital dash. And the interior just seemed a bit more premium with lots more kind of gloss black and piano black uh, trim here and there. Now, don't get me wrong, it is a nice interior. I do love this um, steering wheel, full leather, nice and chunky with the paddles and everything like that. But just not having CarPlay, I know it is a real first world problem, but 
for someone who uses a lot of sat navs and bits and bobs like that, it is really handy to have it on the screen. Yes, this car does have a sat nav built in, but I use Waze personally, it's just a, it's live traffic and it's just a lot easier. Um, so that is one kind of tip for anyone who kind of does a lot of miles and relies on having things like CarPlay as standard, you are missing that. You can get them coded and you can get CarPlay coded, uh, but you do have to have the SatNav Pro, which annoyingly I don't have on my car, but that's just a personal preference of mine. You can kind of spruce it up with some carbon bits here and there, which I do plan to do in the future. Um, maybe an Alcantara wheel or something like that, but as standard, it's not kind of up there um, with say the, the Golf R, for example. Um, but yeah, hope that makes sense. Now moving on to tip number three, any excuse to get the bonnet up to have a look at that glorious B58, although it is looking a little bit grubby at the moment, so I do apologize for that. Um, known faults, now every car out there will have at least one known fault. And with the 140, there's only really two that I'm properly aware of. The first of which is the occasional coolant leak. Um, now this is mainly common on the pre-LCI models, so the kind of 2017 and before. Um, I think the LCI kind of started from late 2017 up till now, the 19. It isn't really a, much of a common issue, it's just something to be aware of. Um, I mean, you do get obviously all the warnings on the dash um, and BMW are aware of it. But me personally, I haven't had any issues, touch wood, fingers crossed, for now. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd include that. Um, well, it's definitely something that you guys should be aware of. Now, the second one is actually to do with the exhaust, mainly the M Performance exhaust, but it is not really something which will affect the car mechanically. It's just a bit of an annoyance, and that is a rattle on the cold start. Now, we all know the 140s are renowned for their cold start. Pretty much every time you start it, the revs stay up, and it stays loud for about 15 seconds. Um, but on some of the exhausts, I don't know, something to do with the clampings or something, it just causes a bit of a rattle. Um, now this is actually known for the M2s as well, um, but yeah, just something to be aware of as well. But other than that, the car's bulletproof, um, absolutely bulletproof, but like I said, every car has faults nonetheless. Tip number four for you guys is actually down to the looks. Now I know this is a pretty obvious thing because anyone wanting to buy a 140i will be more than aware of the looks, but just a p bit of a personal preference that they don't really look like much as standard with the wheels that come with it. The fact that even though this is a shadow edition, there was still these gray bits here and there, albeit we did get the gloss black uh, kidney grills, but just the looks of the car from standard was just a bit too subtle for someone like me. I don't know if it's because I'm young and want to put body kits on it and things like that. Um, but for me, for a hot hatch, it just didn't seem shouty enough i don't know it is mainly down to personal preference but things like the maxton kit the little eyebrows on the front and just removing the rest of those gray bits really have made a big difference along with having new wheels and lowering it and bits and bobs like that now i know no car is perfect by any means but the sheer performance of this car almost deserves to have more of a sporty and kind of ish stealthy look to it especially with the lip spoiler and the new wheels and bits and bobs like that but like i said you guys will already be aware of the fact that it might look a little bit dull as standard, but just as long as you know that with a few subtle modifications like a Maxton kit or some de-chroming, it will look amazing. And I know that is extremely biased, but I hope that makes sense and you get the idea of that anyway. Now, the final tip which I'm gonna give you guys in today's video is not necessarily a tip, but kind of just, well, common sense really. And that is the economy side of this car. Now, I'm sure that no one will be buying one of these cars as kind of like a company car, a motorway cruiser that will get 70 miles per gallon. That is not what this car is about. And I've left this till the end of the video because not everyone will be watching the end um, and it's also not really that important. But this car does like to drink fuel with the three litre up front pushing pretty much 350 brake. Although it does have eight gears, so in that sense, it is a very easy car to drive on motorways. You get no drone even with uh, exhaust modifications because the revs are right down to like one and a half thousand RPM. But it's not really the most economical car, especially because when you do some exhaust mods to it, it basically pushes you to drive it fast because the, the harder you drive it, the more fun it really is, especially with the diff and just all the bits and bolts, which I've personally done to this car, it all just comes together. Um, I'm dying to get this thing onto a track. Um, but yeah, obviously fairly self-explanatory. This is not the kind of car which you'd buy um, to really do a lot of motorway miles. Fair enough, some of you guys may do that. Uh, I personally struggle to get 
any much higher than 32 mpg personally um, but there we go that, again that might just be because i'm young and i like to drive my cars how they are built to be but anyway that's going to wrap things up for today's video a very simple straightforward um, one nonetheless but i hope you guys have enjoyed we kind of sat down here in the driveway enjoying this sun and this color estral blue looks fantastic in the sun i will admit um, with everything that's going on at the moment my car is as clean as it's ever been <laughs> um, because any opportunity come down here and come down here and give it a nice polish but anyway that's going to wrap things up for today's video i hope you guys have enjoyed if you have please do make sure you leave a like and make sure to subscribe for all the adventures that's